Hi, this is Dr. Rustam Khan with Saras Medical Stuff. Today I'm going to tell you about the very important chapter from the medicine that is about the poisoning. It's a very important chapter. Majority of the students leave this chapter on a choice. They think that it's not important from the exam point of view. But believe me, this is too much important chapter both from exam point of view and both from clinical point of view. Even majority of newly inducted house officer and medical officer do not know that how to handle the case of poisoning. So I'm going to cover this chapter both uh, from clinical point of view and exam point of view. So I will try my best to cover this uh, lecture of poisoning in uh, three lectures. So let's start with the poisoning. So before going to start a poisoning, I'm going to tell you about the content of this chapter that which contents are present in this so poisoning by there are different method or uh, different uh, things which cause poisoning so first is a poisoning by specific pharmaceutical agent uh, poisoning by specific pharmaceutical agent that is paracetamol or uh, uh, acetaminophen second is salicylate or aspirin and third is tricyclic antidepressant the fourth one is a lithium and the fifth one is iron the second class is a drug of misuse which can also cause poisoning like cannabis also called marijuana and the benzodiazepines third is a cocaine and the fourth is opioid Number third is chemical pesticides. In chemical pesticide, it's a more common practice for suicide attempt in China. This is a carbon monoxide, ethylene glycol, methanol poisoning, and organophosphorus poisoning. The fourth is venom's poisoning. Venom's poisoning, like uh, uh, due to snake bite or scorpion bite. Now, let's see. But before going to uh, start it uh, specifically from uh, specifically each poisoning in a detail I'm going to tell you some method of management which we should we must know it in the initial management of poisoning there are some method number first is gastrointestinal decontamination mean to decontaminate the GIT and prevent the toxin from absorption so in this we have uh, the first one is activated charcoal in case of activated charcoal, what do the activated charcoal? Activated charcoal absorb toxin in the uh, GI tract as a result of large surface area. It having large surface area, so it prevent absorption of toxin. The efficacy mean the benefit of this uh, activated charcoal decrease with time. It should be given within one hour of poisoning. What's the dosing? What's the dose of uh, this uh, 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 this activated charcoal in a single? You have to give a single dose in first hour, but in case of serious poisoning, irrespective of the time, uh, you should have to give multiple doses. So, what are the substances that are uh, absorbed best by the activated charcoal? You should have to learn these by fingertips that when a poisoning occurs due to these substances, that you should know that I am going to give the special activated charcoal and it will be absorbed good. So, these are the substances like carbaminophen, phenobarbital, dapsin, quinine, and theophylline. And the substances which are poorly absorbed by the Activated charcoal, these are iron, lithium, and chemicals. Among chemicals are acid, alkalis, ethanol, and ethylene glycol. And also are the substances which are poorly absorbed by the activated charcoal are mercury, mercury, methanol, and petroleum products. These are also poorly absorbed by the activated charcoal. So the next one is a gastric aspiration and lavage gastric lavage and gastric aspiration we also practice this method in case of poisoning so what are the indication and contraindication of this method it should not be apply, uh, employed routinely in acute poisoning we do not use in every acute poisoning method uh, in every acute poisoning this method it is not more effective than activated charcoal Use for substances that are poorly absorbed by the activated charcoal. Those substances which I mentioned earlier which are poorly absorbed by the uh, activated charcoal for that we use a gastric aspiration and gastric leverage. And this gastric aspiration is contraindicated in which cases? In case of acids, 
bases and petroleum product the next the next uh, process which we uh, you practice in case of poisoning is a uh, whole ball irrigations and a method or by how by which method we use this whole bowl or gut irrigation so we introduce a large amount of osmotically balanced substance which substance is polyethyl glycol plus electrolyte solution polyethyl glycol plus electrolyte solution we introduce this substance to the patient by mean of nasogastric tube ng tube and what are the indication of this whole bowel or uh, gut irrigation indication is poisoning when poisoning occur with iron if a person ingests too much iron and rush to hospital you can practice this method and the uh, poisoning with lithium or uh, ingested packet of illicit drugs these are the indication of this method whole bowel irrigation and what are the contraindication contraindication if there is increased risk of uh, expiration suppose a patient is unconscious or comatized and you are going to practice this method and there is a chance of uh, expiration of gastric content into the lungs so avoid this method and a patient is hemodynamically uh, unstable like there is hemodynamically instability like his blood pressure urine output all these things are and temperature are unstable so also avoid this method if there is a history of gi gastrointestinal tract hemorrhage or bowel obstruction or paralytic ileus so uh, stay away from this method in the fourth one uh, in the second one in uh, in uh, you poisoning decontamination is urinary alkalinization we know that like absorb like means similar absorb similar basic substances when there is basic substances reabsorbed from you uh, reabsorbed from urine if ph is if there is a basic substances in urine it will be reabsorbed in nephron if the ph is basic if the ph of urine is basic acidic substance it will be reabsorbed from urine if ph is acidic so therefore to facilitate urinary excretion mean to ex to facilitate the excretion of poisoning we have to make this environment dislike for absorption so we do what uh, in case of acidic substances we drop the ph of urine urine ph should be alkalinized mean in a basic range above from 7 above from neutral toward the basic the ph should be more than 7.5 it is achieved by administration of sodium bicarbonate by mean of what thing we drop the uh, we increase the ph make it toward the basic side by introduction of sodium bicarbonate and what are the indication of this uh, urinary alkalinization in case of aspirin salicylate poisoning methotrexate poisoning and the next method is hemodialysis and hemoperfusion it enhance the elimination of small volume of distribution if there is small volume of distribution or long half life if someone ingest a poisoning or uh, overdose of therapeutic drugs and it half life is too long so we can use the hemodialysis process and hemoperfusion what occur in hemodialysis used when toxins are small enough to cause the dialysis membrane if the size of poisoning substances is too much small so we can use this hemodialysis and hemoperfusion involve binding of toxin to activated charcoal in this process involve the binding of toxin to activated charcoal it's the mechanism of hemoperfusion and the last one is a lipid emulsion therapy it is used in case of poisoning with lipid soluble agent it is used for poisoning with lipid soluble agent if the poisoning is due to substances which are lipid soluble it start that lipid soluble toxin uh, partition into the iv lipids reducing target tissue concentration it uh, it hold the poisons in the iv lipids and prevent it from depositing in target tissue like brain lungs etc so what is the dosing of this the administration of uh, intravenous 20% lipid emulsion uh, in amount of 1.5 ml per kg followed by continuous infusion of 0.25 ml per kg per minute until the clinical improvement indication in which condition it is indicated in case of local anesthetic 
TCA, CCB, calcium channel blocker, tricyclic antidepressant, and lipid soluble beta blocker like propanolol. So now let's come toward the specific poisoning toward the each poisoning in a detail. What's a salicylate poisoning and a spring poisoning? What happen in this? Salicylate do what? A spring do what? Salicylate uncouple cellular oxidation phosphorylation resulting in anaerobic metabolism. The cellular oxidation uh, help us to provide the ATP and aerobic. Uh, it is it is uh, it is occur in aerobic respiration. When we, there is salicylate poisoning, it uncouples cellular oxidation. So phosphorylation results in anaerobic metabolism and excessive production of lactic acid. When there is anaerobic uh, respiration, so there will be lactic acid and heat production. A single dose of more than 200 mg per kg body weight is likely, pro likely to produce significant acute toxication if a person ingests 200 mg per kg body weight. Now you should think that 60 if a man is 60 kg that how much if he ingest he will it will got acute poisoning so half life of aspirin is two to three hour in small doses but in case of intoxication may reach to 20 hours so if person came with a uh, spring poisoning so what will be the clinical features so in case of uh, in spring poisoning if there is mild so features will be different clinical if moderate cl cl clinical features will be different if severe so it will be different in case of mild if concern uh, if amount is uh, more than 150 milligram per kg body weight there will be nausea vomiting patient will complain of tinnitus and deafness hyperventilation and respiratory <coughs> alkalosis in case of moderate more than 250 milligram per kg body weight peripheral vasodilation bounding falls and propuse profuse sweating in case of severe more than 500 milligram per kg body weight so what will happen metabolic acidosis hyperglycemia hypercalcemia renal failure and shock plus cerebral edema so what is the management of aspirin poisoning a person rush to the hospital with acute aspirin poisoning so you have to give him activated charcoal as i have uh, described activated charcoal briefly earlier to block absorption within first hour iv bicarbonate to treat acidosis and the third step is urinary alkalinization because it is acidic so we have to make the ph basic to facilitate the excretion it is indicated when spring level is more than 500 milligram per liter mean when there is severe poisoning it increases rate of aspirin excretion. It is done with dextrose water plus sodium bicarbonate. In the fourth step in case of management of aspirin poisoning is hemodialysis. Indicated when serum aspirin level is more than 700 mg per liter. In case of metabolic acidosis, renal failure, pulmonary edema, coma and conversion. All these are the feature of uh, severe aspirin poisoning. The second one is tricyclic antidepressant. So what these do tricyclic antidepressant uh, poisoning is associated with high morbidity and mortality relating to their sodium channel blocking effect and anticholinergic effect and alpha blocking effect. So due to these three sodium channel blocking effect anticholinergic and alpha blocking effect its mortality is very high. So what are the clinical features if a person come uh, with the poisoning of tricyclic antidepressants so he will have a tachycardia come with too much fast heart rate and he will come with a hypertension he will come with a confusion there will be hallucination there will be dilated pupil people will be dilated it's, his mouth will be dry anticholinergic if all these are anticholinergic hot and dry skin there will be urinary retention constipation in case of severe intoxication remember three C's from the first C comma, from the second C convulsion and divergent strabismus. There will be divergent squint and the third C cardiac problem like ECG prolongation of QRS interval risk of arrhythmia. So what's the management of tricyclic antidepressant? So 12 lead ECG and cardiac monitoring for at least 6 hour IV sodium bicarbonate 
in ke in management there is uh, ecg is very important coding monitoring is very important because it effect on the because it having a, a, a alpha blocking effect so coding monitoring is very important uh, introduction uh, administration of sodium bicarbonate iv uh, what the sodium bicarbonate do in this case it protect heart against arrhythmias unlike sprint toxicity bicarbonate does not increase urinary excretion of tca tricyclic antidepressants so what are the indication of uh, sodium bicarbonate in case of this uh, tricyclic antidepressant when there is arrhythmia and acidosis so then introduce uh, administer the iv sodium bicarbonate in the second uh, thing in management in the third the third step in uh, management of uh, tca poisoning is adequate oxygenations you have to provide adequate oxygenation to patient iv benzodiazepines IV benzodiazepine is very important for prolonged convulsion. If convulsion is prolonged, you have to give IV uh, benzodiazepine. A lipid emergent therapy in severe and tractable uh, poisoning. And the next one is lithium. Lithium, we use this in a bipolar disorder. Its toxicity usually result of Therapeutic overdosing, uh, chronic toxicity, then self poisoning. It's a uh, it used in case of a suicidal attack or self poisoning is l is less, but its poisoning is due to therapeutic overdose. So, what are will be the clinical feature of the lithium poisoning? It will be polyuria, thirst, diarrhea, vomiting, dizziness, tremors, muscular weakness, myoclonus, fasciculation, and choreoetitosis. In case of severe poisoning, there will be coma, convulsion, ataxia, cardiac arrhythmia, blood pressure disturbance, and renal failure. So keep in mind polyuria, thirst, diarrhea, vomiting, dizziness, and tremor. And history there will patient will also give a history of uh, uh, he will be a history of there will be a history of bipolar disorder and a use of uh, lithium from long time. So these are not too much specific clinical feature but there will be history in a background so what will be the management in case of lithium poisoning force it diuresis with sodium by uh, sodium chloride 0.9 percent is effective in elimination of urethrum you have to introduce diuresis force it diuresis so that this product excrete from the body dialysis is a treatment of choice and is indicated when the lithium concentration is more than 4 millimole per liter after chronic poisoning daily we use dialysis when the uh, substances of poisoning is very small and able to cross the membrane of uh, dialysis lithium if lithium concentration is more than 7.5 millimole after acute poisoning so in these two cases uh, on basis of concentration we use the dialysis if neurological feature are present if there is also a neurological features like uh, uh, dizziness uh, and convulsion choreoetitosis etc coma convulsion ataxia so we can use dialysis uh, to cover the patient early if renal function is impaired if there is renal failure so we can use the dialysis in the last one is uh, iron poisoning so the clinical features of iron if someone ingests too much iron especially it's occur in ladies so the GA disturbance with passage of gray and black stool he will come with the clinical feature that there is a gray stool and there is a disturbance in gastrointestinal tract he will be having a, a, a complaint of hematemesis mean bleeding in the vomiting and rectal bleeding hyperglycemia and leukocytosis his WBC count will uh, increase. Hyper, there will be hyper. In case of severe poisoning, there will be drowsiness, convulsion, coma, and metabolic acidosis, also cardiovascular collapse. In case of poisoning, keep one thing in mind that a majority of the symptoms are confusing, and you may uh, it um, you may confuse with the symptoms and confuse the poisoning so but the history is very important in the history from the patient and also from the witness of the patient from the relative of patient so be focused on the history main thing is history and clinical features so we will uh, then get a right direction 
to treat the patient of poisoning. So what will be the manager? So gastric leverage in the first hour of overdose, activated charcoal is affected since iron is not uh, bound, mean not absorbed before absorption, activated charcoal is uh, effective but after absorption it is ineffective. Treatment is separative and directed, it is, uh, directed to reduce the complication. The antidote of uh, choice is dysferoxamine which chelates iron. Dysferoxamine is the antidote of choice. Keep it in mind. It's very important for the MCQ's purposes and also it's very important in a hospital if in your HO or MO. Dysferoxamine should be given in patient with the feature of severe poisoning and symptomatic patient with high serum iron concentration of more than 5 uh, mg per liter if its concentration is of iron is more than uh, serum iron concentration is more than 5 mg per liter then you should go straight away and give a dysferoxamine to a patient because it's the antidote of choice in case of severe poisoning without thinking give dysferoxamine so this was all about the poisoning thank you